Hello dear students. Welcome to today's class. This is Sir Albert Nongrum from the Department of Value Education. Today the topic for the class is Constitution Day. Now you might be wondering why are we talking about this topic today? Because you know today the 26th of November all over the country we celebrate Constitution Day because it was on this day in 1949 that the Constitution of India was adopted though it was enforced from the 26th of January 1950. So therefore as citizens of the country on this particular day we should be proud because we all know that the Constitution of India on this day was adopted. Constitution which was framed by Indian themselves and for the Indian themselves. So therefore let's try to understand what is a constitution. In general we can say that a constitution is the supreme law of the land. All other laws therefore they have to conform to the constitution. So we can say that a constitution is a source from which other laws come from it. And it is through this constitution that we can see two important aspects. First, it is through a constitution that the relationship between different levels of government is determined. Just imagine if there was no constitution. Every government department or ministry would be operating on its own. But why we see this harmony today in the different levels of government, it is because of the constitution. And also a constitution determines the relationship that a government and the citizens should have. If this constitution was not there, then the relationship between the government and the citizens definitely would be a very vague relationship or let us say there would be no relationship at all. The government would do what it wants without taking the people into consideration. But today we know because the constitution is there, therefore the relationship between the government and the citizens is a harmonious relationship. As you can see here, Patrick Henry said uh, uh, about a constitution where he made an important observation where he says, the constitution is not an instrument for the government to restrain the people. It is an instrument for the people to restrain the government. Now we understand that the constitution is therefore not for anyone but for the people. You know, and for the people to let us say put a check on the powers of the government so that the government is there to benefit the people, to work for the people and to look after the interests of the people at large. All right? So therefore, that is why we understand the importance, therefore, of this day, which we celebrate, as I've said, Constitution Day. So here you see the preamble to the Constitution of India. And the preamble stresses on a very important aspect. That is, it stresses on the fact, the very first word itself, if you read, we the people, it signifies that power is ultimately vested in the hands of the people of India. So unlike Great Britain, which there it, uh, they have what is called as parliamentary sovereignty, in India we have what is called as popular sovereignty, which means the source of authority, which is the constitution, actually the source of that is the people of India. So therefore, the preamble is a very, it signifies that important aspect of the constitution in which the people are the most important uh, part of the country and therefore the government of the day should work therefore should try to strive therefore towards working or towards materializing the interests of the people of the nation so before we go ahead i would just like you to listen to this very beautiful song about the preamble of india and after that we are going to come back and further look into the this aspect that we are discussing today about the importance of the constitution 
ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution all right so i hope when you uh, after watching that video probably you've understood the ideals which the constitution of india seeks to achieve and therefore we come to a very important aspect or a very important question why do we need a constitution so we can say in general we need a constitution to govern a country properly if there was no constitution there would be chaos there would be conflicts but because we have a constitution that is why we have law and order everything in the country is let us say in harmony because of the constitution the second part is the constitution defines the nature of the political system of a country for instance when we read the constitution of india therefore we understand that the constitution of india seeks to make india into a parliamentary form of government as you as we see in the preamble also it talks about sovereignty so the constitution therefore defines the nature of a political system of a country why is why is india let us say different from america because the constitution of india says that india should have a parliamentary system of government not a presidential form of government so therefore the constitution of india defines the nature of the political system of a country the third important aspect why do we need a constitution is because sometimes we feel strongly about an issue that might go against our larger interests and therefore the constitution helps us guard against this that is why for instance 
we have the power of judicial review whereby the judiciary can strike down any law which goes against the interests or the spirit of the constitution so therefore therefore we need to understand a constitution therefore guards us against interests which might go against the nation or the country at large so therefore the constitution is required to have the authoritative allocation of power and function and also therefore to restrict them within its limit if you look at the constitution of india the various provisions that are there in our constitution have been borrowed from different constitutions of the world we have taken the best of the constitutions of the world and we have inculcated in our constitution of course we have not simply copy and paste but we have although we have copied those provisions but we have applied it taking into consideration the situation or the context of a country so that is why if you look at the constitution of india as you can see here we have borrowed various provisions like for instance uh, the way in which the president is supposed to function okay or the republic system where the head of uh, or uh, where you, where we look at the cabinet system that we have the parliamentary system uh, that we have in india the bicameral nature of parliament okay the council of ministers all of these we have borrowed from the constitution of uk and for instance from usa we have borrowed the aspect of a written constitution the way in which the vice president is appointed the fundamental rights which are a very important part of the constitution so if you look at the various provisions that we have in our constitution we have borrowed it from different countries of the world and if we look at the making of the constitution we know that the constitution of india was not framed by the british for us but it was the indians themselves who sat down in a constituent assembly deliberated on the various important issues that the country needs to look into so therefore it was through this constituent assembly that the constitution of india was formulated so it was a constitution which uh, which was of the indians and which was made also for the indians themselves they said that ironically if you look at the constitution of japan when the constitution of japan was framed the only japanese who was available in who was there in the room was the translator it was a constitution which was not let us say coming from the people but actually it was imposed on them but we are so blessed so fortunate that we have a constitution where our leaders or the indians themselves have formulated a constitution for us so therefore if you look at a constituent assembly of india was elected from all the provincial assemblies from all the different princely states and therefore it had around 389 members in all including 93 representatives of indian princely states and sachidanand singha was the oldest member of the constituent assembly he was elected as a provisional chairman of the session but on the uh, 11th of december 1946 dr rajendra prasad was elected as the permanent chairman of the constituent assembly and the constituent assembly adopted the constitution of india on the 26th of november 1949 and was enforced from the 26th of january 1950 so that is why today we celebrate constitution day because on the 26th of november 1949 the constitution of india was adopted and there were various important committees that were formed for instance here you find the union powers committee which was headed by shri jawaharlal nehru who was the chairman the committee on fundamental rights and minorities which was headed by sardar vallabhbhai patel the steering committee which had three members where km munshi was the chairman and the provincial constitution committee which had 25 members again sardar patel was the chairman and the committee on union constitution which had around 15 members where jawaharlal nehru was the chairman 
Okay, so here you find the Constituent Assembly, and here is the Chairman of the Constituent Assembly, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, and here we have a photo of Dr. Rajendra Prasad and Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, the Chairman of the Drafting Committee, and here you have the different members of the Constituent Assembly sitting for many days in order to deliberate on how the Constitution of India is to be formulated or basically to formulate the constitution for the country so that the country can be governed by a constitution of its own. And here we find the father of the Indian constitution, Dr. Ambedkar, who was the chairman of the drafting committee and he was the chairman and in this committee it had another seven members together who were part of the committee. And the Constituent Assembly, when the Constitution of India was adopted, it had important articles, important parts, and a very important part especially is part 3 of the Indian Constitution, which deals with the fundamental rights of Indian citizens. And you have the Director Principles of State Policy, which we find in part 4 of the Indian Constitution, which guides the policies of the state which basically gives direction to the policies of the state in various areas so that ultimately the interests of the people can be safeguarded and can be promoted. So here you find important articles and also we find in a constitution the different types of emergency that we have actually borrowed from Germany so national emergency, constitutional emergency, what we call as president's rule, and we have financial emergency. And also we have different schedules to the constitution, the 12 schedules of the constitution, which basically is a list of various provisions which are similar in nature, are grouped together in these schedules of the constitution. And here you have the procedure of amendment of the constitution of India, by simple majority, by special majority and whenever a bill affects the interest also of the state then that bill also even though it will be passed by a special majority has to be sent to the states and at least half of the state legislatures should ratify it. And here we find the main characteristics of the constitution of India which has some distinct and unique features. It is the longest written constitution, it is also called as the bulkiest constitution in the world because we have tried to give the best by inculcating the best features from the different constitutions of the world. That is why our constitution is the longest. It also has a feature of partly rigid and partly flexible where we can amend certain features of the constitution can be amended in a very easy way or a very flexible way where certain features it is quite difficult. And we, uh, the main characteristics of the Constitution of India also is it has, it is a democratic republic, democratic in the sense it is ruled by the people, the republic because the head of state is an elected head, not unlike Great Britain where the head of state is not elected but appointed on the basis of heredity. And in India, the Constitution of India also enshrines uh, for a parliamentary system of government, a federation the aspect it has the aspect of fundamental rights certain rights which the state has to guarantee which cannot be violated by the state the part four which we just talked about a few minutes back which talks about the directive principles of state policy and also a very important aspect that is the fundamental duties which we find in article 51a which talks about that as citizens we do we not only have rights but also we have duties the uh, aspect of a secular state which is enshrined in a constitution and independent, independent judiciary, the aspect of single citizenship, all of these we find you know, the main characteristics of the constitution of India. So therefore, my dear students, in conclusion we can say that we are really proud today and if you look at this picture, this is uh, it shows the pages from the constitution of India at the Parliament Museum. So whenever you find time, you can go to the Parliament Museum, visit it and have a look at the original copy of the Constitution of India. So therefore, 
we are very blessed today that we are celebrating constitution day and once again the top the idea or basically the efforts in putting this class today is to tell us that this is a very important day for us because the constitution of india came into being through the framers of our constitution who sat who took the pain who took the effort to sat sat uh, to sit down and deliberate on various aspects and through their pain and struggle we are enjoying the fruits of their efforts today so once again i would like to wish you a very uh, happy constitution day today and let us cherish the ideals that the constitution enshrines and promotes and let us protect them and once again god bless you all and also god bless each and every one of us thank you